Yo, it's your girl Paige Cakey, and right now you are locked into Media Spotlight UK. So, happy Halloween for everybody. <laughs> this is this so was not weird, but <laughs> <laughs> happy Halloween. <laughs> I've got here Paige Cakey, how are you? Um, I'm really good, thank you. Uh, yeah, hey, is this, is this, this what you want? It's a bit creepy, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool, I'll, I'll take this shit off. <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is not doing me like, and don't don't it. I had a little something earlier, but it's fine. Yeah. I, I'm I'm glad I'm here now. Um, Paige, it's been a long time. Yeah. How has it been for you? Like, it's been too long since I've seen you last. It's been good. Um, yeah, it's been a great year so far. Yeah. It was a great it year last has. year. So, but yeah, this is my best year so far. I def it. I can definitely see like yeah. from the progression from when we first met you. I think you was 19 when we first met you. Yeah. And now to this point, like your career is even going to skyrocket even more, like crazy with the acting. Uh, you got loving, which we're going to go to in a little while. By the way, one of my favorite tracks of all time from yours, oh, as well as you. down. Yeah. I love down. <laughs> That's my I, favorite. I love down. <laughs> um, you got verses. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about verses. It's been out in cinemas for a couple of weeks now. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, what what was the experience like being in this sort of environment where knowing that this is focused on battle rap, uh, it's a story, um, you know, it's, it kind of gives me the flavour of like 8 Mile, but in the UK flavour. So how did you get involved with it? Um, well, Versus just came through the team and it was just, when it came, when I like received the script and I read what it was about, I thought, wow, I want to be part of this straight away. Yeah. Because it's rapping and acting and I've always wanted to put rapping and acting together yeah. I've always wanted to do a film where I get to be Paige Cakey and rap yeah. but then when I got the chance to do battle rap I was like whoa because I'm not this is a, like battle, a new venue yeah, for you battle rap it? Yeah. is a whole different vibe like you've really got to get in someone's face yeah. you've got to, it's, it's different because you've got to like cuss somebody yeah. and my music I would say is quite positive I don't yeah. like put people down it's, in my it's music it's kind of like so the opposite spectrum yeah, so, to yeah, yeah. so it was it was tricky but I just watched a lot of battle rap online I was going to ask that actually because like there's a lot of uh, UK um, rap battle scenes like Don't Flop mm -hmm. um like how did you watch a lot of those uh, battle raps to get you inspired to um, get in the zone? I'm gonna be honest. I didn't even know that there was like a, a UK scene of battle really? rap. Really? I've always been into like Queen of the Ring, which is like an American female rap battle where they're in a ring and they just go at each other. It was only around this time of the film I found Don't Flop, and then I actually got into it and I did yeah. like watching it. And then um, Shotty Horror, like he is an amazing battle rapper. Yeah. And uh, he's actually one of my faves. Like. <laughs> yeah, he is. And like just watching his stuff, I thought, wow. Oh, like he's so he's yeah. so aggressive with his bars mm -hmm. but like come off screen he just he seems he's, like one of the nicest guys yeah, in the world he's lovely um how did you how did you actually get adjusted to it like in terms of the whole writing aspect like saying you're getting your bars together mm -hmm. in, in a battle rap as opposed to writing for a tune like how were you able to put all those bars together naturally and to make it fit on screen for like that sort of um flavor? i used to come in early and sit down with the director ed and like he just had an amazing energy. So I would literally, he would just tell me things about the character. Mm. So um, he will give me points. For example, if I'm going to Adam, he'll be like, Adam got kicked out of school. Yeah. Like, put that in your bars. You get what I mean? So then I would just kind of get a story from him and then I'll just write the raps, show it to Ed, the director, and then he'll be like, yeah. So you so. reflect it in terms of what the script is yeah, presenting yeah, to you. Yeah, basically. yeah, basically. Okay. Um, so if a rap battler were to challenge you, would you take on the challenge now that you've got a little bit of that experience? <laughs> probably not. Pro probably not. <laughs> even, even if it was a nice amount of money on the table for you? It probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, money's the motivator. Yeah. Um, well, it seems like you've grown so much confidence over the years, uh, not just in music, but in acting as well. Like, you know, when we first spoke to you, it was uh, Waterloo Road, Attack the Block. Uh, you played a small part in Legacy. Um, what has made you grow in so much confidence over the years? Like, obviously, I can see the transition from the beginning till now. How have you grown in confidence in terms of, like, being be able to do more acting roles confidently? Um, I just think it's just life experiences. Mm. I feel like as you get older, you grow more confident. And when I met you first, I was, like, quite new in this. So mm. it was just a new avenue, and I was just kind of adjusting to the industry. And I yeah. feel like now I've been in it for so long, I feel just, yeah, I feel like, What's, a lot more confident. Yeah. <laughs> I can see, I can see yeah. that. You're swagging, mu yeah. you're swagging much more. You've got the grills in yeah. there. <laughs> Boy, I need to step up my game, seriously. Um, the last time I saw you as well, like, 
obviously the biggest change I've seen and a lot in, and you've spoken to a lot of people mm-hmm. about this is the hair. Mm-hmm. Um, now, for most, we have already know that, you know, you went to Istanbul, uh, you had uh, tracks on alopecia, mm-hmm. um, and you went out to, uh, to get this done, basically. Uh, but what I want to know is, what was, what was the biggest challenge in doing so? Because I heard that th- there was a lot of emotion to it where, like, you held back from a lot of people to even uh, talk about that. Like, what was that in your view? Um... I feel like it's such a taboo subject. A lot mm. of people don't talk about um, losing hair. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people go through it, but it's something where we don't speak about it because it's not it's not out there. Like You don't see nothing on TV about it. So people feel like they've got to hide it because it's not it's not a positive. And no. I feel like I just hid it because I'm in the industry and a lot of people look up to me. And I, I get comments a lot like, oh, your hair looks so lovely. Mm. But deep down, people didn't know I was in a struggle with my hair where I absolutely hated my hair. I ruined my hair through just doing like weaves and tight What was it? You did K-Rose. a bit of mascara on your hair as yes, well Yes, so I used to, to like up? put mascara on to cover it up. Mm. And yeah, I just got to a point where I just wasn't happy. So there's no point living a lie. Mm. And I didn't tell friends because I feel like I'm young. Like, I shouldn't be losing hair. Mm. And like my friends have like lovely hair. So I just didn't want to be like girl. Did you feel you was going to be judged if you had said something initially before you went over? Um, with friends and family, no. Mm. With like um, social media, if I went out like that, mm. then yeah. That's why I didn't want to tell nobody. Mm. But then it just got to a point where I thought, you know what? I'm going to get a hair transplant because... That way I can make myself happy because then I'm going to get back the hair that mm. I lost. And, and it's um, a fresh start for you as well. Yeah, because so it, it seems like this is, it, it's like Page of Cakey 2.0. <laughs> yeah. To put it that way, like, you know, obviously the new the new hair is giving you a lot more confidence. Yeah, so I feel like I learned so much about myself during that period. Mm. Being a female and having no hair on your head, like getting it all shaved off is a big thing. To a female, hair is everything Mm. if someone wants to come go out to a woman and just shave her hair off she's gonna have no confidence Mm. so i felt like it built my confidence that's probably why i'm a lot more confident Mm. and i feel like now i'm living my my truth yeah like i was living a lie before and honestly i just feel like a new person and Mm. i i know what beauty is now and i feel like Mm. beauty is what is within it's not not not, yeah and i feel like before i thought beauty was an outside thing but it's not it's what is within yeah and you're Mm. living your best life yeah living my best (laughs) life yeah (laughs) i can see you're out there you know what i mean all these music videos going abroad you know what i mean swagging it out (laughs) like constantly um so in terms of like the feedback um, for the hair is the last sort of thing talking about um, was there was there a lot of positive feedback from your fans because obviously what fans would have seen before to now mm-hmm. is like it's, it's a massive change um, especially for the eyes of social media mm-hmm. like did you get a lot of positive feedback from your hardcore fan base um, I think all the feedback was positive. Mm. I barely saw mm. negatives. Like, mm. there's always trolls, but yeah, I would say standard, yeah. 99.9% <laughs> was just positives. It was just people saying, wow, like, finally someone speaking up, or people saying, I'm going through this, or my daughter has alopecia. Like, there was just so much. Like, even today, I'm still getting messages. Mm. And it was just nice to be able to use my platform to help others, mm. even though that wasn't even the idea. The whole, the reason why... So it I, wasn't planned out No, it wasn't though. planned. I didn't want to do this. I only done it because I couldn't hide it. And then mm. I thought, you know what? Let me just tell the truth. And in telling the truth, I feel like I opened a whole new avenue to myself, to Paige Kiki. And I feel mm. like I gained a lot of respect through like older people, younger people, um, family members of like young people that listen to my music. Mm. So I just feel like I, yeah, I've gained a whole new like fan base and people that don't like my music, they did message me saying, I respect what you've done, blah, mm. blah, blah, even though I don't listen so to your music. So even though they might not have listened to your yeah, music before, so they're now like... Yeah, so now they're now Now following. gain a new fan respect yeah, for you yeah. in terms of that. What would you say is your biggest life uh, experience so far, your biggest life lesson? Because obviously, you know, with the hair, <laughs> um, with your music, uh, from the progression of, you know, being a teenager to now, like, what has been your life lesson so far? Um, My biggest life lesson is... I don't even know. There's so many, like... Yeah. There's so many from, like friends like just growing up and outgrowing people Mm. to being in situations where you just feel so low and I don't know I went through so many life lessons this year and um I feel like one of them was probably just not putting everything out on social media okay Um, interesting and that goes to everyone I feel like a lot of people put their emotions out on 
Yeah. But you I feel like a it's a lot easier. Yeah, I feel like it's easier for people to talk to social media than to talk to friends because you're just writing something on the internet. Yeah, because like you can't hiding. just talk to a blank yeah, wall, especially by, by like yourself. Yeah, and I just feel like things like that. I feel like... This year, I've tried to be a lot more positive on social media because sometimes I just feel like I wear my heart on my sleeve mm. on the on the <laughs> on social media. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just trying to you know change and be yeah, a change bit a more bit. positive. I've got a lot of people looking up to me, and of course, I can yeah. see that. And there's a lot more artists that uh, you know that are even reaching out to you, not just like in our homegrown, mm-hmm. but also internationally yeah. as well. Like uh, you, you've you've been to like Germany and France, mm-hmm. and I heard something about like there was what a French artist that um, reached out to you. Have I got that right? In yeah. Saint-Zo? So there's a, there's a lot of uh, international favour for you. Do you ever go back to watch your old music videos from back in the day? Yeah, I do it sometimes. Yeah, do you do you look at yourself and think like, I'm glad I'm at this point now in yeah. terms of confidence from that? Yeah, of course. But um, I feel like when I came out, I had the confidence. Um, I even think I had the swag when I came out. I had a little swag going on. Like, but I do feel like I changed a lot as a musician sure. and the type of music I make and the quality of music I make. Yeah. So I feel like... It's on a higher level, I feel level, like, yeah, I feel like before see. I was just rapping and finding a beat and just mm. rapping. Now I'm very, like, particular about what beats I even rap on. It's, it's a str- yeah, strategy, like I say, yeah. Before I would just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I say no. If I don't like something, I say no. Mm. And I feel like that's the difference between the old version of me and the new version. New version yeah. of you. Um, let's talk about Loving with Gecko. <laughs> um, four million to date now. One of my ultimate favorite tunes of yours. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and obviously with Gecko, like you've known him for a long time as, as a brother figure. Um, in t- I've heard that you went over to Barcelona and it was like a two day shoot. Mm-hmm. Like, ha- ha- like, tell us, <laughs> how was it, how was it so short in terms of a, a, a video shoot? But how do you manage to get it together and look so uh, um, flawless? <laughs> That, the director, Simon, Simon Orks, he shoots the majority of my stuff. I just shouted him. Crazy thing is he was actually in Barcelona shooting. Mm. So I said to him, look, can you get one day free to shoot? And we're going to come out to Barcelona for two days. He said, yeah, found a dope Airbnb, mm. booked it. And then I was like, Gex, like, you ready? Like, let's get out. And he booked his flight and I bought my flight. And yeah, yeah I brought um, my makeup artist and then... Um, my friend came and we just turned up. He brought a yeah, few yeah, yeah, yeah. and we just turned up. And it was just a vibe because that whole day we was like drinking. We was <laughs> I can cooking. See, I can like, see that, yeah. Yeah, like we was cooking, making breakfasts. And even even in the process of like, you know, the video being shot that you were just cooking yeah, breakfast. Yeah, so like, it's actually it's crazy. Mad. We yeah. didn't put that in the video, but we did make like egg, uh, egg toasted sandwiches and stuff during the shoot. <laughs> 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 She's just getting hungry from that yeah, now. So You're making we me actually, hungry we still. We did do that. We, yeah. we made that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously, you know, Gecko must be a big influence on you in terms of music wise. Is there more coming up with you and him? Yeah, like we just finished the track the other day and we're just going to continue to work. It's like an authentic, like, yeah, music sort of approach to it. And I just feel like, I don't know, I feel like when we come together, we create such a vibe and like the way Loving, like Loving done really well. And just to see like every day when it first came out, it was getting 100k views a yeah. day like to me that's crazy i don't get that on my solo stuff and i don't know if he does but i mean when we when we make things together yeah it's, come together, it's magic yeah it's crazy it's so mad. it's like we can't really let that magic go and i think he's a super talented artist uh, yeah 100 percent. I, I think he's just so wavy and the way his mind works when he makes music and his melodies like mm. i think he's dope okay so music acting mm-hmm. you're touring all over um future fashion icon I can see as well <laughs> you know what I mean you've got all the swag going on um what would you say to be your ultimate goal like what's your ultimate goal when you've finished your career like what would you want to leave behind for everybody to know you from uh just a legacy I want to leave a pagey cakey legacy um I feel like I'm on my way to doing it mm. and yeah I just I don't know. I just <laughs> want to leave, like, yeah. You know, like, how people always, like, talk about, for example, Miss Dynamite. Mm. Like, she was the female... Because I remember we yeah, talked about yeah, it years I ago. Yeah, I Miss Dynamite. I want to be, like... Have you ever worked with her on a, on a, no, on a project? Yeah, when I met her, I feel like I didn't express how much I actually loved her. Because I didn't want to act like a fan. Oh, right, But okay. then I did reach out to her on Twitter, and I sent her a really lovely message. And she sent me such an amazing message back that I screenshot. Yeah. And I'm going to keep forever. Okay, yeah. uh, that, that's that's a memory to have. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 like, did you ever get a picture with her and put it on your wall to say like, no, yeah, that's I've a memory? No, I got a picture with her, but I, was, I just hate the way I look in it. I wasn't ready. And we only <laughs> done like one. You I, ready. I just didn't want to bug her. 
Yeah. Um, we're, we're speaking of females, uh, just to touch up quickly before we wrap up, um, the female scene, I can see, is very, mm-hmm. very strong. Um, you know, there's yourself, Steph London, Miss Banks, uh, you know, so many na- like Ray Black, uh, so many names that I could uh, come up with. How do you feel uh, in terms of the female uh, scene as a, as a whole, um, uh, how strong it's been right now? Like, how, how do you feel um, about it? I just feel like females right now on the scene are breaking the barriers mm. and, you know, like, there's, there was always that stupid stereotypical view when mm. they can't rap and I feel like for a female, we always have to prove ourselves. But I feel like this is the time where we're finally getting our chance to shine. And it's like people like Steph, like she's making major moves. Mm. I don't think there's been a female like rapper um, from the UK that's done that's crossed yeah. over. Yeah, and just like seeing that mm. it itself is a, a massive like achievement, and mm. it, insp- it inspires me. I hope it inspires the rest of the females. But um, are you looking to break the US like in, yeah, in likeness to what Steph's done? Love, yeah, I would love to, and that's one of my goals. And I feel like it's possible, one hundred percent. And I feel like um, music wise, uh, the America is definitely taking in mm. the UK, and it's just good to see like collabs between like Drake and Section, Drake and Gigs, Drake and Skepta. Mm. Um, yeah, Chris Brown and Section. Like, it's just sick to see that you know that that bridge that was in the ways. Everything's getting bridged together. Mm. And, yeah, because yeah, because I've seen that you've been to like you know New York on quite a few mm-hmm. occasions, even Atlanta, and then you're yeah. working with. Uh, some producers that I've seen on yeah. your stories. Is there anyone worth mentioning like, yeah, that we so can shout out? Yeah, I work with um, a guy called Park Hill. Mm. He's actually originally from here, but now he lives in Atlanta. Okay. And I worked with Epic. He produced Bryson Tiller's Don't. Nice. So yeah, I worked with him in um, Atlanta and he was pretty dope as well, man. Nice, nice, nice. So what's coming up next for you? Because um, obviously uh, I'm hearing that you are nominated for the Urban Music Awards yeah. for the track Loving With Gecko. Yeah. Uh, have you got a speech ready? Should you win? Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> just straightforward, I'm just thank gonna you. I'm going to keep it real. I'm mm. going to be nervous, so it would be short and simple. Thank you, everyone. I love you guys. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then, and then and just then turn up And then when I get off, off, then I'll probably go on social media and write a real thing, like, thank you. Because yeah. it gives you more time yeah, to kind but of like that. My yeah. mind, I don't want to start on stage and stuff, yeah. so I will just keep it short and sweet. Uh, short and sweet. <laughs> Best way to go. Yeah. Um, well, Paigey, it's been so long, um, and... Before we came on camera, like I, I thought, let me just try and put a bit of blood on my face, and then I spilled on myself. So yeah, what a way to uh, celebrate Halloween. So Paige, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, hope we don't leave it for another year or two <laughs> till the next interview. But it's been a pleasure. Um, if you could tell our audience uh, where they can catch you on all socials, uh, what's happening for you next? Uh, tell them all right here. Um, you can find me on social media. The quickest thing to do is go and Google and type in Paige Cakey. And you'll find Snapchat, everything, Insta. And um, yeah, look out for my mixtape dropping very soon called Flavours. It's very flavoursome. Um, yeah, it's... Stra- it's strawberry, it's chocolate flavour? What, what red flavors? velvet type red- of flavour, yeah. Ooh. My favourite cake. Oh, I love red velvet. With um, buttercream icing. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> I'm making me hungry now. This is Jay Bills for Media Spotlight UK with the wonderful Paige Keiki. Make sure you catch her all over the globe, all over the map, and new projects coming out, and we're out of here. Peace. Peace.